up, you put that code in, and I'll have them give me until uh, today, whatever time they get up in America. It's 2 a.m. now. So probably seven or eight hours, uh, maybe 10 hours, give them 10 hours, that, that code will be up. You can go on and you get all the PDFs, all of the videos, wow. all of that stuff. And then we'll talk some more about that. But Amen. I don't want to take your Thanks, time. Billy. Thank you so much. Yes. So um, I'm sure the, the, before the conference is over, we're going to make sure that all that information is available for you. Amen. So quickly, in 20 minutes, we just want to talk about uh, the calling for grace in the marketplace. This is a book that God gave me uh, two years ago. And, I, you know, I didn't even know what I was going to put in the book. But the Lord said to me, I need you to uh, put this book together. I need you to have teachings around, you know, grace in the marketplace. And the Lord said these words to me. He said, because the solutions uh, to our continent's wars lie within and not without. Amen. So in other words, the solutions are not going to come from uh, far away someplace where some savior is going to come and save us, but the solutions are within. Amen. And I believe, you know, some of the truths that we share in this book will change your life forever. So we're just going to, I actually had a sermon for today, but I forgot my laptop at home. So we're going to just look at some stuff for about 20 minutes, and then we will talk about, you know, whatever the Lord puts on my heart from the book. The book itself is about 10 chapters, and uh, all of them good. My personal favorite is Manifesting Witty Inventions, how you can manifest, you know, creativity in the marketplace, and uh, also divine strategies for the marketplace. Amen? But the story itself actually starts in Genesis, chapter number 1. I'm going to read from verse 27 to 28 in the Message Bible. And uh, the Bible says God created human beings. He created them God-like, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. He blessed them. Someone say, I'm blessed. What that means is you are empowered or you are graced for the marketplace. Amen. You do not lack anything. God has already given you everything that you need to be a success. Amen. And um, so God blessed them. God has already empowered us uh, for prosperity and for success. Now, we are about to read the first words mankind ever heard from the mouth of God. Amen. Are you ready? Open inverted commas. The first word mankind ever heard from God's mouth was prosper. Amen. I mean, God could have said rapture. <laughs> he could have said hold on. Or he could have said struggle. He could have said don't worry, it's going to get better. Someday in the sweet by and by, back home would say by and by. It's going to get better by and by. You know, when we get to heaven with Peter, James, and John, but right now, just hold on. No, God didn't say that. God said prosper. That's right. That's right. Amen? I said amen. He said prosper. So God's original intent for mankind is prosperity. It's not a man-made plan. We are not that clever. Amen? It, it's a God idea. So God's original plan for you and I is prosperity. It is to prosper. God wants us to prosper. And it's interesting that no one ever told me this for close to 25 years. And I was in the church. Amen. I grew up poor, grew up in a, in a small house. I just recently visited uh, the neighborhood that I grew up in, and we made adjustments to the house. But this is the house that I grew up in. I'm going to pull up a picture right now. This is the house that I, oh man, yeah, this is the house that I grew up in. This was a three-roomed house. This is the original house that I grew up in right now. Uh, because God blessed us and we are prospering, we managed to make some alterations, me and my siblings. So my parents, and uh, they have a bigger property. They have a bigger, you know, family home that when we all get, go back to Kwekwe, you know, small town in the middle of Zimbabwe, one traffic light, about 600,000 people, we can be comfortable. But this is the house that I grew up in, used to sleep under the kitchen table with my four siblings, mom and dad, and uh, no one ever told me that God's plan for me was to prosper. I needed to hear it. Amen? In fact, when I lived in that house, I had a dream, and my dream was to uh, own a bicycle because the guy who lived next door, and this is literally next door, the next door 
was another house. Amen. <laughs> it's not metaphorically. The next door was, you know, really another house. So the guy who lived next door had a really nice bicycle with a little generator at the back wheel that, you know, when you turn it on, it would, you know, get the light on. And man, he was prospering and we all wanted his bicycle. That was my dream. And God delivered me from that dream and showed me that there was a better plan uh, for me. Amen. And for my life. And, you know, I'm, I'm living that plan, I believe. And, uh, man, God sometimes has, has to literally take you out of an environment and expose you to, to a different environment to change the way you think. Amen? The reason I was limited is because that's all I knew. Amen? And, so, and, and God does it all the time with me. And, uh, you know, when I, I picked up Billy from the airport, in fact, before I even picked him up, uh, Ashley said to me, you need to come to Wealth Builders. So I went to Wealth Builders in March. And when I was at Wealth Builders, man, he was, he was literally mind-blowing. And God does that with me all the time. He just puts me in an environment that challenges my thinking uh, so I can start thinking bigger and differently. So I was at Wealth Builders. I think Billy is going to share a little bit more about that. And they made a call for investors to uh, come to uh, uh, Tricord. And he said something interesting. He said, we only have a few folders outside. Uh, minimum investment is about 500000 I think, at the conference. 25000 The median investment is 100000 Average investment is $1 million. So in other words, if you average everything that the investors are bringing in, one million US. US dollars, amen, about 15 million rand, and it did something to my thinking. I thought the average, if the average investment is 15 million rand, that means there's someone who has extra 15 million rand that's sitting somewhere in their account uh, waiting to take this opportunity so they can invest. And what it did is it changed my pan. You was, was talking about a pan yesterday. I thought, man, I need to increase my pan so I can get bigger fish in the pan. Amen? So God will do those things sometimes with you just to change your thinking. And when you can come to a conference like this one, where you have guys like Ashley, guys like Billy, and I'll throw myself in there, guys like me. Amen? <laughs> can come here and, and, and challenge you to a different way of thinking, I believe that exposes you to something different than what you know, and it changes the way you think, and it also changes your expectation. Yes. One of the greatest things we can invest in our people, uh, those of you who are pastors, is, uh, you know, different experiences, you know, different environments. Last year, uh, at the end of the year, I think it was October, we took a group of our leaders, I think about 12 of them, uh, to New York City because there was a global network gathering going on there. And I took them uh, simply for the reason that I wanted them to be exposed to something greater. Yeah. So we took them and we went up uh, the Empire State Building and, uh, in Manhattan. And, uh, you know, I'd go to every single one of them and ask them, what does this do to you? And almost all of them would say, man, this changes everything. Because some of them grew up in a, in a, in a similar, you know, setting. But what it does is it changes the way you think. Because sometimes just reading God wants you to prosper without a reference is limiting. Amen? And when God brings you into an environment like that, it just shifts everything. So God said, prosper. It's the first thing God ever said to mankind. That's God's plan for you. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. God says, I have a plan for you. And this plan is not to harm you. But this plan is to prosper you and give you an expected end. Man, when I heard that, I got excited. Just to know that God wanted me to prosper. God wanted me to win in life. God wanted me to win in the marketplace. Amen? Third John 1 verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. In other words, prosper to the level of your thinking even as your soul prospers. So you have to shift your thinking. You know, I was talking to uh, the landlord, the property that we uh, meet for church, and, you know, when he found out I wrote Grace in the Marketplace, he came through, and some of the ushers told me, man, this man was frantically looking for you. He really wants to talk to you, so I went to see him. I thought we were in trouble. And he said, Tavar, I want to share something with you. God has been speaking to me about the same things you talked about. I need you to, you know, uh, attend one of my classes. So he takes classes on the property and teach people how to prosper. And he started showing me a six-level 
uh, a stage of what he calls the, the pathway to significance. And uh, he showed me, he said most people start at struggle and they move to stability. And after stability, they move to success. And he says beyond success, we need to get to significance. And he says, man, when you get to significance, that's when you're starting to uh, make a difference in other people's lives, which is ultimately the reason for our prosperity. Remember the, the, the triangle that Billy drew yesterday? Right at the top is kingdom. It is when we start making an impact uh, for the kingdom of God. Amen? But he said something that really shook my thinking. He said beyond significance is legacy. Okay. And I asked him, I said, what's legacy? And he said, that's what people will remember when they hear your name about 300 years from today. And my brain tilted. Because I wasn't even thinking 300 years from today. I mean, I was thinking about lunch at that particular moment. <laughs> That's how far I had gone, you know. <laughs> lunch and Nando's. <laughs> Cotter chicken and... <laughs> Lemon and her, baby. <laughs> that's, that's how far I was thinking. So it shook my thinking and he said, man, you need to start thinking 300 years from today. He said an average Japanese firm is built to last 300 years. So they put systems, they put vision, they're thinking beyond a Range Rover. Amen? Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the second thing God said to mankind was reproduce. Back to Genesis, chapter number 1, verse 27 to 28. The second thing God said to mankind was reproduce. And reproduce, God began to speak to me. He said, this is not just limited to uh, procreation. Amen? Uh, how many of you realize that God could have planted the whole universe? I'm not just talking about the earth. God could have planted the whole universe, all of the planets. But what God did was just plant a garden. And what he did with the garden is he gave it to Adam as a prototype as a sample. And he said to Adam, what I'm giving you is a business idea. Now you take it and make it international. That's what it means by reproduce. What that means is whenever God gives you an idea, it's always going to come in seed form. Amen. And, you know, just like Ashley said uh, yesterday, Zachariah, I'm not going to say Zechariah, Zechariah 4 verse 10, that's what I would say it here. Zechariah 4 verse 10 says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Amen? In other words, when God blesses you, sometimes it comes in, in seed form. And, and if you don't have the ability to perceive the potential of seed form ideas, you can brush them off. Amen? Everything will come to you in seed form. And this is where you need wisdom, you need insight for you to be able to see the greatness of the seed form ideas. Now, if God gives you in seed form, the question I had was, God, how am I going to move it from the garden all the way to how it ended in the book of Revelation? God always had a big city in his mind. But he started off in the beginning as a garden. And what he did is he put the ingenuity and the creativity in Adam to take it from a garden all the way to a city that has 12 foundations, all of them made out of precious stones. And he said the power to move it from there to this is already on the inside of you. That's why we started with God bless them. What God has blessed you with is a grace for the marketplace. Amen? Amen? And how you move it from slow to big is you start stewarding it. You know, part of what uh, both Billy and Ashley was talking about yesterday, you know, stewardship. Matthew chapter number 25. They both taught from Matthew 25, and I thought I should probably also do the same, amen, just to fit in with the big guns. So Matthew 25 talks about the master giving talents to his uh, uh, servants, and he says to one he gave five, to another he gave two, uh, to the other one he gave one, remember the story? And when I read that, I felt sorry for the guy who got one talent until I Googled it. When I Googled it, I stopped feeling sorry for him. And someone may say, why? Because I found out a talent is about 33.3 kgs of gold. And I, when I Googled that to today's value, I found out that it's about 1.4 million U.S. dollars. So the man got a lot of money. Amen? 
One talent is 1.4 million U.S. dollars. And part of the process is the master gave it to them. He says, go and trade. And the Bible says, after a long time. Someone say, after a long time. So faithfulness is only measured after a long time. And some people get discouraged by that, but I don't think you should. You know why? Because if someone gave me 1.4 million U.S. dollars and a long time, I would love them forever. <laughs> Amen? So a long time is an investment. It shouldn't discourage you. Amen? He says, after a long time, the master came back and he says, let's talk. What did you do with my stuff? First one said, I made five more. Well done, good end. Faithful servant. Now, Jesus said something powerful. He said, because you were faithful with very little. And the next word after that is I. Who might be I? I is God. You see, when you focus on being faithful, God says, now it's over to me. You know, one of the things God taught me is, you never have to promote yourself. All you have to do is to be faithful with what I tell you to do. And if you're faithful with the things that I tell you to do, I will make you ruler over many things. Amen. A lot of people are trying to manipulate, you know, almost force God's hand and do all kinds of stuff without realizing that Jesus gave us a law. And the law says, faithful with the least, I will promote you. Amen. Amen. And when God taught me that lesson, he said, Tafara, you don't ever have to write another motivation letter asking anyone to invite you to preach. You don't ever have to, you know, try and convince anyone that you are a good speaker. My name is Tafara. You know I can speak. <laughs> I would love for you to invite me to speak for you. He said, you don't have to do any of that. All I want you to do is to be faithful with what I tell you to do. Amen. Amen. And we've been doing that for, you know, a few years now, and that's the only thing I probably teach on leadership at our church. Most of the people, when they come for uh, mentorship classes, they probably already know. I think it was Wilma. Uh, she said, Pastor T, I already know what you're going to tell me. I need to be faithful. I said, yeah, that's the only thing I know. If you're faithful, God says he'll promote you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. When you're faithful, God begins to open doors of opportunity for you. And he says the same thing to the guy with two talents. He said, I've given you two because you made two more. You're very faithful with a very little. I will make you ruler over much. Then the other guy with 1.4 million came and he said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man. Listen, if you give me 1.4 million, I will never call you names. <laughs> Master, I knew you to be a hard man. Man, if you give me 1.4 million, I'll never call you anything ugly. He says, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you haven't sown, and I went and I, you know, put this in the ground. There it is. You can have what you gave me. And the master wasn't pleased with him. The master said, man, you are a wicked servant. <laughs> Cast him into the utter darkness. He said something interesting. He said, now take the talent that he has and give it to the one who already has ten. Yeah. Yeah. Man, evidently Jesus is not robbing hood. You know, take from the, take from, I probably, I'll be honest with you, I probably would have taken from the guy with 10 to give the guy with one. Because that's just how we are wired, you know. Oh no, we feel sorry for this guy. I mean, he only has one talent, only 1.4 million. You know, let's take, let's make things even. No, Jesus didn't do that. He took from the guy with one talent. And talents, 33 kgs, this is what we said, 1.4 million. Really, how God taught me, he said, this represents opportunities. He says talents, because I used to think talents was like, you know, a talent. I'm a singer. Uh, I can dance. You know, I'm an engineer. I'm an artist. I used to think that's what the talents that he was talking about in this scripture, but it's not. You know why? Because Romans 11, 29 says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. So God will never take away your ability to sing. But what God will take away is your opportunity to manifest your gift. Because opportunities flow in the direction of faithfulness. Man, you'll have a good voice to sing, but nowhere to sing it. <laughs> Amen. And these opportunities, sometimes they look like, you know, what Ashley was talking about. Opportunities look like relationships sometimes. God will give you a relationship uh, as an opportunity to change your life. 
Amen. And when you don't learn how to be faithful with relationships, you can sabotage yourself. Amen. One of the things God taught me was, uh, Tafara, you're going to have to be faithful uh, with people because the real currency for life is not money. You know, one of the uh, statements I put in this book is that uh, relationships are the currency of life. So money is not the currency of life. Relationships are. And when you learn how to navigate relationship, what that means is when you learn how to love people genuinely without any motive, God will begin to trust you with, uh, Billy calls them divine connections. I like to call them golden connectors. God begins to trust you with relationships that will just connect you to your destiny. Amen? But for us to get there, we have to learn how to be faithful with the relationships that God... Tr- we, you, you can't be Mr. Squeezer, M- Mr. Liar, Mr. Advantage Taker, you know, and expect God to trust you with his people. Amen? You, I always share this at our church. You can't have a master's in hurting people and expect God to bring you more people to hurt. You can't have a master's in sabotaging relationships and expect to prosper. Things don't work that way. God uses people to bring us into places, in the marketplace. God is going to use people to do stuff for you. Amen? I said amen. Amen. In fact, he said it to Paul in uh, Acts 18 verse 10. If I can read Acts 18 uh, verse 10. Let's just talk about relationships and then we'll look at one more thing. And uh, we can take a break. Uh, This is God speaking to Paul in Acts 18 verse 10. He says, for I am with you and no one will attack you to hurt you. Why? What's the reason? He says, for I have who? Many what? People where? In this city. And it's the same thing God is saying to you this morning. I have many people in this city for your business, for your calling. For, the, for your skill, God is saying, I have many people in this city that can open doors for you. Some of you know we are on TBN, uh, free of charge. And the reason or one of the ways God used to get us on TBN uh, was relationships. You know, God brought us some people who were interested in what we were teaching and they knew the right people and they opened the door for us and we are now on television speaking to uh, the whole continent of Africa without paying money. You know why? Because there's some things that God wants to do in your life that are bigger than your bank account. Because you can have all the money that you want but there's some places you can't buy a ticket to get into. Amen? You're going to have to know someone. At the end of, uh, all of us bought tickets to go to uh, Wealth Builders, and at the end of the conference, uh, Ashley said to me, you know what, I'm going sne- to sneak you into the green room. <laughs> and he said, man, you're going to come upstairs with me, but here's the deal. I can't bring you in right now. I have to go and scope and see what it looks like and see if the mood is right. And he went up, and he said, right now, come upstairs. Man, I got onto the lift and I went in and he opened the door and snuck me in. How did I get into the green room? I knew somebody. They were not selling tickets into the green room. Amen. So God uses people and we're going to have to learn how to live lives, our lives honoring people and loving people and genuinely connecting with people. And I'm telling you, God can do great business deals when we learn these principles. Amen. Lastly, Jesus said something really powerful in Matthew uh, 25, I believe, verse 29. He said something really powerful, but it's strong. I don't even know if I should read it now or wait and read it at the end of the conference because... Some of you may leave, but this is not me speaking. This is Jesus speaking, the one who you call Lord. And this is what he says. He said when he took the one talent from the one and he gave it to the guy with ten, Jesus went on to make this conclusion. And he said, for to everyone who has, more will be given. So the question I had was, Jesus, are you saying the rich get richer? And Jesus told me, he said, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, to everyone who has faithfulness, more opportunities will be given to him. Amen? I call it the economics of opportunities. They flow in the direction of faithfulness. He's not saying to everyone who has money. 
Because if you think to, I mean, if I read this in Mbizo Kwekwe and thought that to everyone who has money, I mean, this would have, would have literally paralyzed me. So Jesus is not saying to, you know, everyone who has money, more money will be given to me. He's not saying that. He's saying to everyone who has faithfulness, more opportunities will be given to him. You know what that does? It makes the playing field level. Everyone has a chance to get something from the pie. Amen? He says, for to everyone who has faithfulness, more will be given to him, more opportunities, and he will have an abundance, an abundance of what? Opportunities. Have you ever met these people that have an abundance of opportunities? I mean, this guy is singing. He's on TV. He's the director of a channel. He's doing all these things, and you're looking at it like, I don't even have a single job offer. <laughs> what is going on? Because opportunities flow in the direction of faithfulness. Amen? I said amen. amen. And he says something else. He said, but for him who does not have, does not have what? Faithfulness. Even what he has, the opportunities that he has, will be taken away and given to someone else. Because there are just some people who will treat opportunities cheaply. And those opportunities will be taken away and given to people who have mastered. In fact, most business people that are around me and people that prosper have mastered the art of valuing opportunities. And one of the opportunities I've, I've observed them, you know, uh, master the art of valuing is the opportunity of relationships. I always get counseled by my uh, uh, broke friends. You know, I have both friends on the, you know, side of the spectrum. You know, my, my broke friends will call me five minutes before the meeting and say, Ah, Pastor, you know what? I'm not coming anymore. We'll try and do it next month. <laughs> but some of my friends who are doing really well will say, Pastor, I'm going to come 30 minutes early. You know why? Because they've mastered the art of honoring uh, opportunities, the opportunities that God has brought them. And some of those opportunities come in the form of uh, relationships one with another. Amen. Did that bless you? Yes. It blessed me. I enjoyed that. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So that's grace in the marketplace. Amen. Amen. Well, what we're going to do now is we are going to take a five-minute break. And when we come back, it is going to be Billy Epperhart. Man, it's going to be awesome. See you in five minutes. God bless you guys.